Hey everyone, we're high school students, and today we're going to analyze and discuss the poem Eclipse with Object. Sometimes the feeling of being overwhelmed can lead you to a collage of messy emotions, one of them being anxiety. It almost feels like this, this, this dark mass that's, that demolishes your logical sense of judgment and causes you to spiral out of control. I've experienced this when adjusting to high school life and many other stressful situations. This change became overwhelming and I felt this like dark mass clouding my logic. There is a spectacle and something is added to history. It has as its object an indiscretion, old age, a gun, the prevention of sleep. I am placed in its deed and the requisite shadow is yours. It casts across me a violent coat. It seems I fit into its sleeve, so the body wonders. Sometimes it goes where the light does not reach. You recall how they moved us in, in, the, move, in the moon dust? Hop, hop. What they said to us from that distance was stupid. They did not say, I love you, for example. The spectacle has been placed in my room. Can you hear its episode trailing, pretending to be a thing with variegated wings? Do you know the name of this thing? It is a rubbing from an image. The subject of the image is that which trespasses. You are invited to watch, the body in complete dark casting nothing back. The thing turns and flicks and opens. I like this poem because the author portrays fear and worry in such an ominous tone. Yet it also seems so comforting knowing that this dark mass eventually goes away. Now, you might be confused when I say comforting, but let's look at the end, shall we? The thing turns and flicks and opens. To me, this is sort of a representation of this anxiety leaving, leaving and sort of seeing the silver lining at the end of the tunnel, or if you will, the light at the end of the storm. I would also like to mention that this dark mass is probably anxiety and the emotion that clouds the judgment and rational thinking. I also like the use of imagery to convey the darkness instead of saying, the darkness consumed me. Adding on, the author mentions the light does not reach to convey the idea that when you're in the spiral of fear and anxiety, it is hard, maybe even impossible to escape. Ultimately, however, or at the end, it states that, that again, this whole dark mass, this whole spiral just eventually leaves. So even though, so the overarching message is even though it may seem difficult to get out of this dark mass, this spiral of fear and worry where your brain just continues to go down lower and lower things will work out and you will eventually find the light at the end of the tunnel one of my personal favorite parts of this poem was the second and third lines it has as its object an indiscretion old age a gun and the prevention of sleep i really like these lines because they portray things or like events events or objects or things that can happen to a person that may or may not create fear among or within someone. Like for some people, they might be afraid of aging. Others might be afraid of guns and some might just be anxious about losing or, pre or preventing sleep, I guess, in this whole the prevention of sleep part. Because it is fear that could probably cause the prevention of sleep since fear is what can make you again go into this deep spiral and fear also makes leads to irrational decision making in terms of a more personal approach to the poem it has a really effective use of portraying the feeling of mystery and unknown and almost gives off an ominous feeling in the writing a lot of the meaning in the poem lies in its imagery of position and the description of light and darkness one such example is the line pretending to be a thing with variegated wings, which could be in reference to color disappearing in the presence of darkness. Along with this, the poem explores ideas of the unknown and even the fear of death. The poem has a very apparent and central idea of eclipses and celestial events posing many questions. One question could be, is the poem talking about a solar or a lunar eclipse? The body can be represented by Earth, which is casted in darkness during a solar eclipse. And while I do think it is unlikely, a representation of a lunar eclipse would be interesting, especially with the moon's change in color to blood red during a total lunar eclipse. This could be in reference to the line said before, pretending to be a thing with variegated wings. 
Along with this, what might be the meanings of the eclipse? Eclipses can represent many different ideas, both religiously and in astrology, such as new beginnings, overcoming obstacles, unexpected change, times of darkness, etc. Another question may be, what might be the meaning of moon and moon hopping? The poem talks about hopping on the moon, and it also talks about something being said from that distance. While there can be many different interpretations, my closest guess would be in reference to the action of moon hopping and the moon landing of 1969. Moon hopping can mean almost a sense of feeling unnatural, abnormal, and not being able to pro be properly stable. Astronauts hop on the moon because of the gravity difference, and if they were to walk, they would need to get a grip on the ground, which isn't really an option in space on the moon. The moon landing of 1969 has a famous quote of, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, which could be what is meant here. This poem is part of a collection describing the appearance of change by which we come to know ourselves and the world, so there could be many different interpretations of why this was said. Along with this, the poem discusses ideas of how this celestial body and event trespasses the emotions of mankind. While there isn't much related to the poet's biography, this poem comes from a book, and for example, which depicts scenes of human change, emotion, love, politics, grief, etc., through changes in landscape, hence the symbolism of the eclipse. For our credits, we would like to thank the following. PoetryFoundation.org BenSound.com Poets.org Soundtrap.com and the book And For Example by Anne Lauterach.